What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So Stephen A. Smith, ESPN's Stephen A. Smith, was on the Joe Budden podcast again, and the talk got around to LeBron's six finals losses, which is something that LeBron fans don't like to talk too much about. All right, now I'll put a link to this article in the pinned comment in the comment section below. Stephen A. Smith says that he does not blame LeBron James for five of the six, of the uh, six finals losses. So I think you pretty much know the one that he's going to blame him for. And yes, it's the 2011 NBA Finals. He does blame him for that. He says that one is on LeBron. But he used the same old standard, cliched excuses for the rest of them. Um, 2007, he's young. It was a miracle they got there. He should just be congratulated for taking that, dragging that bunch of bombs to the finals. Then in 2014, right, well, he used Wade pretty much as an excuse, saying Wade, Wade's knees were shot, all right? Then in 2015, he said, well, Kyrie... And Kevin Love were hurt. So that's the excuse. You know, when you just got Matthew Dova Dova, you know, then we can't really expect much. And then, you know, 2017 and 18, well, he's playing against a super team. And how on earth are you going to be able to be the super team? You know, he said, oh, you can't blame him for that. So. This is my thing. Since LeBron gets all these excuses for losing to super teams, right? Can Jimmy Butler get an excuse for losing to LeBron's super team in LA in 2020? I mean, because that team had Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Roger and Rondo, right? That's three all-stars. Now, they may not have been an all-star altogether that year, those that year, but they are all all-star level players, right? So people forget about Rondo. People just conveniently forget the, the, the difference maker Rondo was on that squad coming off the bench. That's how short-term memories are, and that's what uh, programming will do to you. So... Jimmy Butler, he didn't have nobody on that team. Uh, Drogic was hurt. Um, Bam was hurt. He went out there and won one game by his damn self. Wow, he was taking business in the taking care of his business in the bedroom allegedly with a former ESPN reporter, whose name I'm not going to mention. You know, Rachel Nichols. So does he get an excuse for that? Well, why, why he don't get passed for that? Hmm. It's funny, only one guy always get passes when he's supposedly going up against super teams. And it's this guy. You know, in game six, in the 1998 finals, Pippen was just a, Pippen was done. Pippen was just a fucking decoy out there. He hurt his back and he was done. They, they had to really work on Pippen's back for him just to even be upright and be out there. But he was done. After he dunked, after he had that initial dunk early in the game, I think he scored maybe once again or twice. That's it. Really, that was it was just Michael Jordan that carried that team. Jordan didn't use an excuse. Matter of fact, Pippen wasn't even an all star that year. I'm just curious, like, you know, what's up with all these excuses? 1975. I know that kills you, 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 you guys who hate history when I do this. But Rick Barry, as much as Rick Barry is loathed, right? As much as he's loathed in lore by NBA fans for being an asshole and all that, right? 
you want to talk about a super team. Now, the Bullets won a title in 1978, but they were more in their prime in 1975. They won 60 games that year to the Bullets 48. I mean, uh, excuse me, to the Warriors 48. The Bullets won 60 games. That team had a 29-year-old West, a uh, 29-year-old Elvin Hayes, who averaged 23 points and 12.2 rebounds and two blocks a game. West Unsell was 28, nine points and 15 rebounds per game and four assists per contest. Phil Chenier was 24, averaging 22 points per game. Kevin Porter, Kevin Porter, the guy who ever. The guy who once held a record for most assists in the game was on that team. He averaged 11.6 points, 8 assists, and 1.9 steals per game. And Truck Robinson was on this team. The same Truck Robinson who I think two years later would lead the NBA in rebounding. Rick Barry didn't have another superstar on his team or another all-star on his team, and they swept this team. But LeBron gets all these excuses, all these goddamn excuses, all the time. And yeah, by the way, that first one was on LeBron. Because let's break it down again. In the first round, they beat a 41-win Wizards team. Right? That had lost Larry Hughes because he was on the Cavaliers. Larry Hughes in 2005 averaged 20 points per game. Or 2006, one of those years, he averaged 20 points per game with the Wizards. And I think he led the NBA in steals. But he's just a bum. Then in the next round, they beat a 41 win Nets team. 41 win. 41 wins. You hear me? Then in the conference finals, they did beat the Pistons, but the Pistons were out Ben Wallace. Then you always hear that they knocked the Pistons out of contention forever, but the very next year, the Pistons were in the conference finals when the Cavaliers were eliminated in the semis. And then in the finals, even though the Cavaliers got swept, each one of those wins, each one of those games, they could have won if LeBron just came out there and didn't shoot 35% from the floor and only averaged 22 points per game. It's funny, that same Spurs team, Kobe came out and smoked the very next year. That same Spurs team, Carmelo Anthony had success against. But because LeBron James had no motherfucking jump shot, plus he was a turnover machine, that's probably the main reasons why they they kept losing. He kept losing to fucking uh, teams like Orlando. Uh, come on, man. Boston kept beating his ass. Then 2013, what, 2014, wasn't it the year that he kept having all those cramps and shit? Don't keep blaming it on fucking Wade or now all of a sudden it's, it's everybody else. It just kills me, man. How about they lost because the Spurs were better? How about that? How about they lost because the Spurs were better? Don't blame Wade's knees. Blame fucking goddamn uh, nobody being able to stop an improving Kawhi Leonard who... Back then, wasn't even known for his offense, averaging 17, 18 points a game. We had no idea he was going to become the player he became. But LeBron got his numbers, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, are all of those finals LeBron's fault? No. But I tell you one thing, of the four championships that he win, do you think that his fan base share any of the credit? Nope. So since they don't share any of the fucking credit, he gonna get all the goddamn blame. I'm sorry. It's just how it works. You're not gonna just blame everybody else when he fucking win uh, when he loses, but when he wins, he gets all the credit. That's just dumb. 